dreams. The love of music collide, where independent musicians emerge into the spotlight. This is Indie Beginnings. Lately, what I've been calling it is is indie folk rock, described as if you took John Mayer and Ben Folds and blended them together, that may be something along the lines of what you'd get with, with Dolson. Actually heading down to finish up mixing the record 89. 89 is this tension between those this youthful naivety and, and just the cynicism that comes with life, that no matter what happens, there's there's still comfort and safety in family. When I started going to school in Akron, it just kind of made sense to start playing around here. But yeah, music is just something I'm really passionate about, and all I really hope to do in five years is to have a stable enough career that I can be working on music full time and paying my bills. I sat down with Andy Osenga. He's a great songwriter. The two of us sat down and we co-wrote this thing, and we kind of had this bonding experience of shared, failed relationships. Definitely had, you know, have had my fair share of, of relationships that, that haven't worked out. And that music is, has definitely been a dream of mine. They say that overnight success happens after about 15 years. So I'm only about four years into it, so I got another, what, 11 years left before, <laughs> before we hit the overnight success. Lowdown's fine arts reporter, Michael Burgoyne, he's going to help us spread the peace. Bringing Yoko Ono in and having her artwork where it exhibits many maps. And she asked uh, the viewer to take a stamp and to place on that actual map where they think peace could be fostered or should be or where they would like to see it. The idea that the viewer of any artwork contributes as much to the meaning of that artwork as the artist does is something that begins to emerge in the 1960s. And in Yoko's case, much of her conceptual art uh, takes the form of text. Some of her earlier works were actually just books and texts, guides. And in that, the first one was how to obtain an aesthetic experience. She was giving you instructions on that and then you filled in the rest. And it requires that the viewer sort of imagine in his or her mind whatever it is that's being communicated. In the case of this exhibition, her art has been concerned with peace. Where should we have this peace? You know, how about our own backyards? Um, so I think she's providing a beautiful opportunity to influence the youth of today. A man controlled by lunacy and demons, trying desperately to suppress the urges of his mindless chaos. A soul lost in his own world, a world alone and desperate. This is the story of Carol Augustine. What's the next election on our For nearly half a century, the city of Akron has been made beautiful by local artist Don Drum. But who is the man behind the art? ZTV News Source's Michael Burgoyne has that answer. The importance of Don Drum echoes throughout Akron's community. I hear I have a certain importance in the city. I like to feel I do a little bit. Uh, I've done several commissions for the city. Uh, one of them is the, I think the oldest one I've done for them is the Fountain of Cascade downtown, which is uh, created in aluminum and stainless steel. That's been there for a long time. That was done during the 60s. Don Drum's artwork has been decorating Akron for over 40 years, and he has no intentions in stopping anytime soon. From inside the Don Drum Gallery, I'm Michael Burgoyne, ZTV News Source. ZTV News Source's Michael Burgoyne 
has the story. <laughs> The University of Akron is a very diverse campus. We have people from all over the world and all kinds of different ethnic backgrounds. The campus here at Akron is definitely very diverse and coming from a very small um, suburban area to the University of Akron it was definitely culture shock but I think it's a good thing. I'm meeting so many different people and learning so much so it definitely helps the learning environment. Preparation. That's what we're all doing here as students at the University of Akron. You never know where you're going to get your first, second, or even tenth job. So by taking advantage of the multi-ethnic environment here at the University of Akron, we'll better prepare you for when the globalized world comes a-knocking. From right outside the Student Union, I'm Michael Burgoyne, ZTV News Source. So we thought this would be a great opportunity to sit back and take a look at how beautiful the University of Akron can be in the winter. I'm your host, Michael Burgoyne, reminding you always, dream for the stars, for one day might be your beginning.